Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of T-365 where I demystify Microsoft solutions for the MSP space. In today's video, I'm recovering all the relevant updates from Microsoft in May 2021. If you've watched my previous update videos, you know I focus in on just the updates that are relevant to MSPs and block out all the noise from Microsoft with their hundreds of updates each month. The main goal of these videos is to help you be more proactive with changes that will affect our end users. Before I get into today's video though, if you have not yet subscribed and want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space, be sure to click on that subscribe button below. Getting into it here, we're going to start off with Microsoft Teams. That's where Microsoft is spending the most money on new features and changes and things like that. The first one here does impact end users. It's not a big impact, but it is shifting some of the settings that they do see in their upper right hand menu such as the ability to traverse between the different accounts that they might be a guest user of between that and their work account, as well as any personal account that they may have set up as well too for Teams. Additionally, they're moving some of the settings outside of this window, such as the Zoom settings, the checking for updates, things like that. Not necessarily something that may be impacting a lot of users in the fact that they don't use those settings that much, but it's still a relevant point to take note here. This will begin in late May and be complete by early June. So this may be something that's already taken effect in a lot of your tenants. The other one here we have is two new feature updates. And the first one of which is the ability to have group chats with external users in Teams. The ability to converse with external users is on by default whenever you provision a new tenant. As an admin, you can block that and whitelist certain domains to create this federation for communication, which is what I recommend doing. But this extension here, what they're saying is that you can enter a chat with more, more than just one participant in that external environment and ecosystem. The only prerequisite is that they have to have an Azure Active Directory account. This will happen starting in mid-May and be complete by late July. What I recommend again is simply turning off these settings for the ability for users to add external uh, environments or people that they want to chat with and limit that to only white label domains for that federation. The other one here that we have is this annotations in PowerPoint live in Teams. This is a cool one because if you're setting up a live meeting, you can now use some type of pointer or marker on your PowerPoints that take effect, that visual uh, aspect of it that other people can see. This is going to be just in the live Teams environment there versus like just a regular presentation. Hopefully they add this to the other settings as well too or the other types of presentations that you would perform. If you're familiar with Slack, they have something like this today where you can pencil in on the screen things that you want to take a look at. So it's more interactive. The difference here though, this is only going to be available for the controller of the presentation and it will not affect the presentation at all. You could obviously see that still if you recorded this session, uh, but this is only going to be available for the actual controller of the presentation to do. This will be happening in late May and be uh, expected to complete in early June. So the other one here, it's really a smaller feature ad that they made, but I think it's pretty cool as well, in which you as the presenter or organizer can go ahead and lower all raised hands. This is something as far as a feature goes, I found to be highly uh, productive in the sense of creating more interaction in your PowerPoints or your presentations, especially with remote work and people not having their cameras on. It's hard to gauge reaction and get people engaged in what you're trying to present without some additional um, external stimulus that, that you see as well too as a presenter. So this is just giving you more flexibility than when hands are raised to lower them all at the same time. This will happen in early June and be complete by mid-June. The final one here for Microsoft Teams is related to security and compliance. This is allowing you within the Teams Admin Center to see certain compliance and security metrics around the applications and the third-party applications that customers might be adding into their environments or you might be adding on their behalf. This gives you more flexibility to see certain requirements being met like FINRA or HIPAA or SOC 2 compliance or something like that before you just blindly add an app within that environment. This is something that was only visible previously within the Microsoft Cloud App Security Portal. I've done a lot of research and can't find anything to point to certain license restrictions on being able to see this. So I'm hoping it's available for everybody, but it's one of those hairy lines where we're going to have to wait till it comes out uh, to actually see that within all of our business tenants as well. So this should be coming out mid-June, be complete by the end of June for the rollout. 
Shifting into Exchange here, there's a couple of new admin environment settings that you can configure here. The first one is related to Reply All Storm Protection, which relates to the spam type of event you get whenever you have many participants replying all to the distro and you have all this commentary that, that acts like spam to many of the participants on that distro list. So you have the ability to block that, but now they're giving you more settings that you can configure as an admin, like the block duration, the number of recipients, that's a minimum that triggers this rule, the detection time as a rolling window, things like that. So they're just allowing you more flexibility. This probably isn't as necessary of a setting with mid to small businesses um, in the sense of the, the main customers you manage, but could be relevant to you know a higher number of, of people that you might have, you know, 500 to 1,000 person tenant that you manage that, that could be very applicable here. That should already be available for you for these settings uh, at, or at the very latest be available by early June. The next one here is important, but cooler if you want to basically have floor plans for workspace and giving that uh, ability or flexibility of, of visibility to see that within the particular uh, mobile environment whenever you're trying to schedule an event on a calendar, you could book a workspace or have that workspace available as a meeting room, something like that. This is something that you do have to have prerequisites in place for, like locations and locations associated with users if you really wanted to look at that granular ability. I've linked a article about this, which includes all that detail within the PDF, which will be below on this video, which has a lot more detail about all of these uh, particular updates. This is going to happen in early May and be complete by mid-May. So by the time you're watching this video, this should already be available within your customer environments. Next one here is really minor, just a small feature add. I want to put in here just because it's a convenience thing for end users. If you've been asked this to have this before, they're going to be able to pin their messages by either toggling them over to the left or using the three dots in the upper right hand corner to basically pin a message so they can easily see all their pin messages at the top. This will be available for iOS and Android in mid June. Moving into SharePoint here. They're adding this feature so that you can stage a new site in SharePoint with this thing called a launch scheduler. It basically is allowing you to do quality assurance and deploy this site into waves of users versus having to do everybody at one time. This is primarily built for larger sites that most of the tenant would interact with like your HR site or your home site to your SharePoint portal. And it does allow you to get a lot of feedback from users or just you know roll this out again in waves so that you can basically make sure by the time it gets to prod in a widespread environment that everything's been worked out. There's nothing that's buggy within it and all the links work and things like that. So just a better experience overall for large rollouts of sites. This is only available on modern sites, so just keep that in mind, but this will be available in late May and be complete by mid-June. If you've been following along with the updates here, you know that Microsoft's really been going hard at uh, adding support for migrating third-party file stores into SharePoint. And with this one, they're adding Dropbox to that list where you're able to mock up a environment for stage migration from Dropbox for all the files and folders into OneDrive and SharePoint. And this is going to be in public preview in late May, be uh, complete in early June but it does allow you to utilize these functionalities without having to pay for a third-party service like BitTitan or Skykick. Those tools are probably a little bit more robust in a lot of senses, and this is obviously not tested yet. So I can't really say if there's some bugginess going on with that that you would want to pay attention to or some limitations, since I haven't really fully dove into it yet because it's still um, on the forefront here. But I would just keep that in mind. You may want to test this out with like a smaller tenant if you have a Dropbox migration coming up. Last announcement here is related to Microsoft 365 Lighthouse, which is Microsoft's multi-tenant level solution for device compliance, threat management, and user access management. This will expand most likely in the long term here to compensate for a lot of the limitations that we've seen previously that exist in Partner Center, but giving the ability to apply policies across multiple tenants and things like that. This is extremely powerful as far as an offering goes, and it leads back to Things I've talked about in the past about RMM tools being something that's going to die in, in five years probably because of solutions like this where if you think about device management, for instance, patches, 
app deployment, device configuration, all of that can be done with Intune. And by giving you this portal that's multi-tenant, it reduces your switching costs quite a bit uh, from that standpoint. It makes you wonder if the cost of having an RMM is worth it, if something like this exists that's already part of your paid offering for your customers. So this is going to start in early June. You'll be able to access this portal by going to lighthouse.microsoft.com. You log in with your partner center credentials. And you'll be able to start seeing the data that's ingested through here. Some of you already may have been part of the public preview. So you may have already been accessing this, but I think this is going to be pretty big. And the telemetry that comes through is available for Microsoft 365 Business Premium Tenants so that you can see the tenant information coming in um, because you do have access to, to Intune data and all of that stuff with that particular SKU. So that's everything I want to showcase for you guys in this video. If you do have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like I mentioned earlier, like or subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.